Alright guys, welcome to another tutorial presented by Code Cyclone. Today we're going to go over some uh, modifications to our player controller, our game, our HUD, and we're going to create our own custom sequence. Uh, which if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it, we're going to get into it. So first off, let's go ahead and work on the player controller. We're going to define two variables, a string and a floating point number. The string is going to be called message, and the float is going to be called message received. Uh, for those of you that are unaware, uh, most of the time you'll access time in the game as a floating point number, which you can see here, because it matches this guy here, world info, which is your game, and the time seconds are how many time or how much uh, time in seconds has passed. Now, under that, we're going to define a function called set message, and it's going to take in a string s message, and what it's going to do is set message equal to s message and the message received to the current time. All right, nice and simple. So whenever we want to pass a message to our player controller, it simply just send it in the string and it'll take care of the rest. Now, let's go to the GS game. We have some properties we have to define. So we had this guy before. So let's ignore him. And we're going to define the player controller class is equal to the class of generic shooter GS player controller. And we have to do this in order to use our various controllers. All right. Next, we're going to define the HUD type as class generic shooter.gshud. And then finally, there's a little boolean here that we needed to uh, override. We need to say u b use classic HUD is equal to true. And that will make sure that we always use our HUD no matter what, whether it's split screen or, or whatever. Okay. So next, say that next, we need to go to the HUD itself and we're gonna go up and define a function simulated function draw HUD. Now what this does is it's defined in the legacy of whatever HUD fun or HUD you're in, whether it be UDK HUD, UT HUD base, UT HUD, whatever. It's for all your your canvas object drawing and logic is going on and if you're not familiar with canvas, canvas is the engine's representation of the screen so anything on the screen as far as HUD elements or HUD information goes is typically canvas. Um, the only exception being GFX or scale form, which we'll get to at some point in the series, which is flash. But I mean, it's effectively just a very nice stylized action script based canvas that uh, resizes very nicely and is useful to some degree. Um, definitely allows you to do some nice things because flash is pretty powerful for that. Okay. So inside draw HUD, let's define a local variable called G or of type GS player control. We'll call it GSPC, and we're going to set that equal to a cast of GS player controller to the player owner, which the player owner is the controller of class controller that owns this HUD. So our player, effectively. So that's where you get the name player owner, the owner or the owning player. All right. Next, we're going to check if our message is not equal to the empty string or nothing. So there's something there. We're going to check to see if the current time minus when it was received has been less than four seconds. So it's been there for four seconds uh, or under. If it has, we're going to use the canvas object and we're going to set its position, its drawing position, to canvas.clipx, which x is positive in this direction and positive Y is going down. So clip X is all the way over here, this far top right corner, divided by two, so we're over here, minus six times the length of the string, which gives you about half the length of the string, so it'll try to center it is what it's doing. And then we're going down, canvas.clip Y, which is all the way down, divided by two, minus 32. So we're gonna be up a little bit. So in this direction. We're going to then set the font, since we're drawing text, as the engine's static large font, which you can get by engine.static.getLargeFont or get medium font or get small font. It'll all return the same thing, just different sizes. All right. Then we do a canvas.setDrawColor to a fairly white color, so 250 all the way down. And then we define the alpha of that, and for those of you that aren't familiar with alpha, alpha is basically the translucency of whatever 
object you're referencing, in this case the text. Um, zero being see-through or not visible and 255 being totally visible. Alright, so we're doing 255 minus 33 times the age of the message. Now I'm going to go and just pause for a second and let you guys think about that and try to think of why I might be doing that. Well, it's real simple. I mean, think about it. As this is staying constant, this, as the message gets older, is continually getting bigger. So we're going to have, at maximum, a 4 times 33. So it'll be about half its uh, value, a little bit more than that, obviously. But just understand that this is getting smaller. So what's that doing is it's making the message less and less visible. So it looks like it's fading out as it gets older. All right, then we're gonna say canvas.drawText, and then we pass it the string, which is the message. Simple enough, right? So in order to draw text, we need to set the position, set the font, set the draw color, and then tell it to draw that sucker. All right, next thing. At the second part of that if-then state, or if-else statement, we're gonna see, um, well, in this case, we don't really need to see anything. We're just checking if it's old, or if it's not old, do this. If it is old, set it equal to nothing. Kill that message, erase it. All right, and then after that, we're gonna tell it super.drawHUD, which is drawing all the parent functions and uh, information, like the scoreboard and all that fun stuff. So that's all being driv uh, drawn, or drawn, rather. Okay, so the next, let's go ahead and jump into our sequence event, since we're uh, getting there anyways. So. First off, let's define a sequence event. We've done some Kismet already, and we kind of just told you to do things, and it didn't really, you know, give you indication what things were or what was really going on. But think of a sequence like this. You have things that are doing something. Those are your sequences, all right? This trigger volume, when it is touched or untouched or empty, these are all different actions of a sequence. And whenever, like say for instance this was on, this would go to here, right? So this in would call this sequence's events, and then it would go out and then so on to the next link, and it would continue to do so in this list as a sequence. So we have sequence actions, which are the individual actions of the main or total sequence. So one sequence action, two sequence action, three you get the idea of this sequence. Okay. Oop. No, I do not want to do that. Cancel. Okay. So we have that. So let's go back to our code. Let's define a class GS underscore sequence broadcast message to player. It's going to extend sequence action, which is an individual sequence. We're going to give two global variables, a GS player controller called player, and a variable string called message. Now we define an event activated, which is called whenever the event is actually in play or being used. Um, typically whenever its input link is activated, this will be activated. That's where all your logic goes. So we see if the player is not equal to none, so if our player controller is something, so we have a player, and the message is not empty, we tell the player to set its message to the message that we're passing to the sequence. Real simple, right? Nothing complex, just whenever this is activated, set the message equal to the message that we have attached. Alright, now let's go to the default properties, we have a few things to define. First off, we need to give this thing a name, so the object name is defined as send important message to the player's HUD. It's kind of long, but it gets the point across. All right, and it's going to be in the category. You can really name this anything. I just called my generic shooter so we could find it. So when you look here and you right click, new action, you can see the category generic shooter and the name send important message to player's HUD. All right. Now next we need to define some variables, which you've seen in other things like these are right here are all variables you know okay so we're going to first empty the variables just in case there's any trash in there or anything else empty them then for the first link 
item one, or technically index zero item one, we're gonna need a class object. So it's just gonna be a generic object. We don't need to write to it, we just need to read, read the player controller. And then we're gonna describe it as the player controller. You can give this any description you want, it's just how you recognize it. And you're gonna tell it the property name you want to modify is player, which is this guy up here. Alright, so it's gonna, whenever this is assigned, it's gonna be passed to this variable. And so forth with the second item in the first index, it's gonna be a string. We don't need to write to it either, just need to read it. We're gonna call it the message to be sent, and it's modifying the property message, the thing we send in. Nice and simple, right? So we have our global variables which contain the data, the event that we're activating, and when it's activated, it sends the message to the player that we reference. All right, so let's go ahead and put this into use. Let's make something out of this, you know? So we have our sequences. Let's go next out of this. Now I've already gone ahead and added a trigger volume just at the top of this little nook here. You can see it defined there. All right, so let's open up Kismet. And if you don't remember how to do an event with a trigger volume, you can do new event using trigger volume one when it's highlighted in the editor, and do touch, and you'll get this guy here. And uh, we actually got a few things to define, make that infinite. We need two variables, a string and a player variable, and you're going to connect the instigator from your touch event into there so it assigns to it. And then it's going to be plugged into the player controller of send important message to player's HUD, which again can be found in action, generic shooter, send important message to the player's HUD, and you'll get that, and just connect them up, take the string, type whatever you want it to say in there, and we'll uh, do hello code cyclone fans, alright, and we're going to call it from the touched event of that trigger volume, so when it's touched, send it in, it's going to take this player, which is the instigator of that trigger, put it in there, send the message in as hello, you know, code cyclone fans. Close that off. So let's go ahead and test it. Play from here. So we got our HUD up still just like normal. We walk in, we walk forward, and bam. And see how it does that little nice fade out effect? Pretty nice, right? nice and simple and you guys can toy with it all you want, make it bigger, make it smaller. Um, I've actually had, I had a product where I first originally developed this system. It actually used an array of times and strings and depending on how long you wanted the string in there you could actually delay or make the string last longer by giving it a longer lifespan. It was actually pretty cool. Um, I thought it was cool anyways. So, But alright guys, that's pretty much it. So. All the things we've covered today, we uh, modified our game files a little bit, got working on um, on our own custom sequence, which is something we haven't done yet. Oop, physics gun. And um, yeah, really, that's probably it. So now you guys know how to make your own sequences. You can start doing some fun things using code and kismet together. Nice little blend of science and technology, and you guys can start making some fun things for your levels and your games. So. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time.